And with all this information, it's easy to surmise that if the Eastern Gate is still sealed when Jesus touches down on the Mount of Olives, it will be sealed no more. Welcome to the Eastern Gate. In this review, I will cover information on this intriguing gate, the Jewish tradition surrounding it, and at the end of this video, I will give a concern about all end times prophecy. Also known as the Golden Gate, the Eastern Gate is located on the east side of Jerusalem facing the Mount of Olives. It is one of eight gates around the Old City today. Starting in the south, we have the Dun Gate, which is the closest gate to the Western Wall. Then there is the Zion Gate. On the west side of the Old City, we have the Jaffa Gate and the New Gate. On the northern section of the city, there is the Damascus Gate and the Herod Gate. And finally, on the east side of the city, we have the Lion's Gate and the Eastern Gate. The Eastern Gate is unique from the other gates in two ways. First, it is the only gate that is sealed, more on why in a moment. And secondly, it is the only gate that gives direct access to the Temple Mount if it wasn't sealed. What makes the Eastern Gate so special to Christians? If you've watched my previous two videos on the Mount of Olives and the Kidron Valley, I explain that both of these lie on the east side of Jerusalem and the Bible states that Jesus went out to the Mount of Olives frequently. Each day Jesus was teaching at the temple, and each evening he went out to spend the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives. So it is not far-fetched to say that Jesus would have walked through the Eastern Gate quite often during his ministry. But not exactly this gate in its current form, because it has been damaged and rebuilt multiple times throughout history. One popular opinion is that the original Eastern Gate is buried below the current sealed gate. But a few factors may call this idea into question. First, these stones you see here at the base of the wall surrounding the Eastern Gate are believed to be from the First Temple period. That is roughly 950 BC to 586 BC. When you look closer, you can see the difference in the types of stones used. It further reveals that these walls were damaged and rebuilt at different points in history. Secondly, inside the Eastern Gate, which you can only access by entering the Temple Mount, you can see ancient posts here also believed to date back to the First Temple period. The day I was on the Temple Mount, I did try to go down these steps to get a closer look, but once I hit the first step, I was yelled at to not go down there. And lastly, there was an archway found inside one of the Muslim tombs in front of the Eastern Gate that is believed to be the top part of the original gate. Others believe, however, that this arch is part of a walkway that was built during the times of King Herod that led up to the Eastern Gate. So regardless, the location of the Eastern Gate as it stands today is basically where the original gate was that stood here 3,000 years ago when first built by King Solomon. It is highly probable Jesus walked through this location very often to enter and leave the Temple Mount during the first century. So when was the current Eastern Gate built? The Muslim authorities today who control the Temple Mount do not allow archaeological work to be done here anymore. So it's unclear when this current version of the Eastern Gate was actually built but most archaeologists believe this version of the gate was built sometime between the 4th century AD and 7th century AD. But this gate has been sealed and reopened a number of times. It was closed by the Muslims in the year 810, but reopened in 1102 by the Crusaders. It became walled up again by the Ayyubid Sultan Saladin after regaining control of Jerusalem from the Crusaders in 1187. About 400 years after that, the Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent rebuilt the city walls and walled up the Eastern Gate in 1541, and it has been remained sealed ever since. Now, why are the Muslims so focused on sealing up this one gate? Jewish tradition states that the Messiah will pass through the Eastern Gate when he comes to rule. So the reasoning for sealing up this Eastern Gate is the Muslim attempt to prevent the Jewish Messiah from gaining entrance to the Temple Mount. Another strategy deployed by the Muslims to disrupt this Jewish Messiah are the Muslim graves located in front of the Eastern Gate. As a Jew, you would be ceremonially unclean if you touched anything dead or anything containing a dead body. Now, I say it's Jewish tradition because there is nothing in the Bible that says the Messiah will enter the Temple Mount through the Eastern Gate. Some will try to say it's recorded in the last chapters in the book of Ezekiel. I'm not going to jump down that rabbit hole here but all I will say is the prince referred to in Ezekiel chapters 45 and 46 that enters the temple court through the gate facing east is not the Messiah. In Ezekiel 45, 22, this prince also has to bring a sin offering for himself and the people. Jesus never sinned, so he has no need to bring a sin offering for himself. Why are there sacrifices being offered at the future third temple during the millennial reign of Christ? 
I'm not sure. I have my ideas, but again, I'm avoiding that rabbit hole for now. Is there any prophecy recorded in the Bible that possibly relates to the Eastern Gate? Well, Zechariah gives us our best idea on what may happen to this sealed gate. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he fights on the day of battle. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley, with half of the mountain moving north and half moving south. A few verses later we read, On that day, living water will flow out from Jerusalem, half of it east to the Dead Sea, and half of it west to the Mediterranean Sea. So this earthquake will not only be strong enough to split a mountain in two that sits directly in front of the eastern gate, it will also accompany this newly formed river that will originate not just from Jerusalem, but Ezekiel chapter 47 says this river originates from the new temple. And with all this information, it's easy to surmise that if the eastern gate is still sealed when Jesus touches down on the Mount of Olives, it will be sealed no more. And this would also take care of all the graves in front of the eastern gate as well. But let's be clear, if Jesus will go through the eastern gate upon his return, any of those graves that remain wouldn't be an issue for Jesus. Matthew chapter 8, verse 3, Jesus touches a man with leprosy and heals him. And in Matthew chapter 9, verse 25, he touches a dead girl by the hand and raises her back to life. Neither one of these incidents has made Jesus ceremonially unclean. Now, it's fun to look at prophetic scripture and try to put all the pieces together, but we must be very careful not to focus too much on it. More than getting bogged down in the what-ifs on these future events, we should focus on what Jesus commands us all to do today. In Matthew chapter 22, when answering what is the greatest commandment, Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. In Matthew chapter 5, he says, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And then in the Great Commission found in Matthew chapter 28, he says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. These commands are difficult to do, and I struggle in always following them. But following these commands has a much greater impact on eternity than spending all of our time trying to guess and figure out how the end will unfold. This concludes my review of the Eastern Gate. I hope you found it interesting. In my next review, we will return to the Mount of Olives and discuss Jesus' final night at the Garden of Gethsemane. But until then, thanks for watching, and as always, God bless.